Hello, Math 30 2. Welcome back. And today we're doing permutations and combinations, combinations part two. So, to start off, our first question says The student council decides to form a subcommittee of five council members to look at how funds raised should be spent on the students of the school. There are 11 total students and five males, six females. So, the first question says no restrictions on the number of males or females. So, if we look at that, if there's no restrictions on either, that's pretty much any combination we could have. So out of the 11 students, we are choosing any five. That's it. And that will give you your answer. Okay? What does that look at? Okay, so what does that look like We're using our formula? That's 11 factorial all over 11 minus 6 factorial 5 factorial. All right? Or 11 factorial all over 5 factorial 5 factorial. Next question says, exactly three females. So here we want exactly three females. So I'm going to do the most specific thing first. Three females. So out of a total of six females, we want exactly three. So out of six, we're choosing three females. All right? Now, if we have three females chosen, what's left? Well, and then that means there must be two males. So then out of five, we have two males. And that's what will make up that one. So click on your calculator, you get your answer. Last one says at least three females. Okay, so here we go. We want at least three females. So what can we have? We could have three females, we could have two females, and we can have one female. Oops, sorry, at least three females, sorry. So that is the minimum is three females. So we could have five females, four females, or three females. That's it, right? That's not a female. So let's try the first option. The first option is out of six females, we're choosing five. That's the max we could have. Well then, how many males are there? Out of five males, we're choosing none. Okay? So that's one. We could have five females, zero males, because it says at least three, so a minimum of three. The next one we're looking at is going to be out of six females, we're choosing four. Next one down the line. Six females choose four. That means how many males there must be. So out of five males, we're choosing one. And let's take a look at the very last one here that we could have is three females. So then out of six, so out of six females, we choose three. And that must mean there are also out of five males, two chosen. So if we look at that, we have Five females and zero males, or notice that six, or or four females and one male, or out of six females we have three, and out of five males we have two, and is always multiply or is always add. Okay, next one, class example number two. Oh, this will give you some answer. Class example number two. Consider a standard deck of 52 cards. How many different five cards hands can be formed with? Well, let's take a look at no condition. So we're just looking at a simple five card hand. So out of 52, we are choosing five. That's it. The next one says at least four cards, four red cards. So at least four of the cards are red. So that means we have a minimum of four red cards. So we can have five red cards or we can have four red cards. So let's try the max first that we have there. So to, now how many red cards are there? There are only 26 red cards. So of those 26 red cards, we want five, okay? And if we have five red cards, we have zero black cards. I could write 26 choose zero, but that's just one. So anything multiplied by one is itself. Or out of 26 choose Four, that's the next one, that means we'll also have one black card. So, and one black card. So out of 26 black cards, we have one. So that's the possible you could have with at least four red cards. We have those together, and you'll get your answer. It's multiplication. Okay? Now I'm going to say multiplication, if you're getting confused, put a dot. Like that. Which also can be multiplication. Next question says, at most, Two kings. So we want at most two kings. Okay, so what are my options? This is my max. We have a max of two kings. 
My options are, well, zero kings, one king, and two kings, right? That's it. So if I look at zero kings, that's my minimum of four, we have choose zero, isn't that? We don't even have to put that really, but I did. Multiplied by, then there's 48 other cards that we are choosing five from, right? Good. Next one, we're going to say one king. So if we have one king, so or we can have one king, four, choose one. Now, how many other cards are there? There are 48 other cards besides kings. And we are choosing four other cards. So remember, we add those together. That's my hand, five. Okay. Now, the last one is we could have two kings. This is the most two kings. That's the max we can have. So then again, out of four kings, we want two of them. And out of 48 other cards, we have to have three others to make up our hand. Okay, because the other card can't be a king. That's why there's only 48. So there we go. Now we're done that one. Okay. So this part here is a good thing to read because now we're getting to max and min, so most and least. And sometimes there's a shortcut to do it. And I'm going to explain in the next question kind of what's happening. But I do recommend you reading this filling it out. So here we go. This question here says, so this question here says, consider a standard deck of 52 cards. How many different five cards hands can be formed containing one club? So how many different five card hands can be formed containing only one club? So we have two card hands. So if you're doing this the way that I was doing it before, this will take a while. So because we have at least one club. So I could have oh, five cards, I could have four club, five clubs, I could have four, because this is my min. So I could have five, four, three, two, or one club. I could have all of these clubs. So there are 13 clubs. And our 13, it's saying we are to choose, well, let's see, 13, choose 5. And that means there's no other cards. Or, out of 13 clubs, we are choosing 4. Now, if you have 13, 4 clubs, how many other clubs, how many other cards do you have? Well, there's 39 others, because we go 52 minus 13 is equal to 39. There's 39 other clubs, cards to choose from. So, and we have out of 39, we are going to choose one. And we keep on doing that, so three, two, one, all the way down. That's going to take a long time. That's a lot of calculation. There's a shorter way to do this. And that is going to be, we could all, this is adding all wanted. Or sum of wanted. The other way to do this is to go total minus unwanted. Okay? So what is the total amount of cards we could have? Total amount of hands. We could have, out of 52 cards, we could choose five. That's all the possible combinations of hands we can have. Now, what is the one thing we cannot have? We're going to subtract that. So we cannot have, well, no clubs. So 13, choose 0. Then if we have no clubs, that means and out of 39 cards, we have the 5, oops, we're choosing 5 others out of the 39. So that is what we cannot have. 5 cards and none of those are clubs. That's what we cannot have. Everything else we could have. So we do that and that will give us our sum. And that's the shortcut around it. Very nice, simple, a lot faster. Okay, let's take a look at this next one here. All right, so we're looking at equivalence. So this here is going in to explain why this is equal to this. Okay, so I like to think of it this way. So we have Fran and Bernie. They're picking up their trucks and cars and they're organizing it. Well, if Fran selects two, she chooses any two at random, what does she have left over? She has eight. So, how many combinations are of two? 
there must be the same amount of combinations of eight because that's the amount left over. So if you think of it that way, they're opposite of each other, therefore they must be equal. So any time we look at these, the opposite of this is that. So let's take another example. If Fran chose six, so out of 10, she chose six, an equivalent to that would be, well, how many left over are there? There's 10, choose four. Those are equal because this subtract that is equal to that. Basically, what's happening here is you're taking, you're choosing six. So the leftovers are different combinations, but it's the same amount of combinations of what you could take. And we're eventually going to show that here using the factorial, okay? So factorial notation show, well, this is the same as 10 factorial all over. We have 10 minus 2 factorial multiplied by 8 factorial is equal to 10 factorial all over uh, 10 minus 8 factorial 2 factorial. Well, what does that end up giving us? 10 factorial all over 2 factorial 8 factorial. Okay? So that just shows they are equivalent in that scenario. But we are having proved it in every single way. So now we are going to algebraically show. Another example would be this right there, 10 and 6. Another one would be, what about 5 and 5? If you 10 choose 5, well, is equal to the same as 10 choose 5. 10 choose 3 is going to be equivalent to, well, we guessed it, 10 choose 7. So let's take a look at D now. So I want to algebraically show this. So if we look at our formula, n factorial, and then we get n minus r factorial r factorial. This is in your formula sheet for, uh, what is that, for this here. That's your formula sheet. Now let's see if it's equal here. Well, it's saying that that is equal to, well, if I look at this, I have n factorial, right? And then I have n. Now, we are supposed to subtract r. In the brackets here, we subtract r. But for r, we have n minus r. So let's look. That is n minus r. Oops. Okay? Because, if I take a look at this, this here is the same as that, right? So that's what's happening. So those are the same. Okay? So, and then that's all factorial. And then what is out here? We have n minus r factorial. So once again, this here is going to there. So we simplify this. I'm just going to simplify that one. I'm going to get n factorial. And then look at this. We have n subtract n, and then n subtract negative r. Well, n subtract n is nothing. And then if we subtract a negative r, the same thing as positive r. And then what are we left with? We have n minus r factorial. So that's how that works. Okay? And isn't that the same as this? Order multiplication, I'll just clear this up so you can look at it more. Order multiplication doesn't really matter. Okay? So there we go. So here we go, our last problem before we do this. So, during a peewee hockey trial, all the players met on ice after the last practice and shook hands with each other. There were a total of 300 handshakes. So write an equation of combinations, the solution would determine the number of players on the ice. So here we're working backwards. We want to know how many players are on the ice. So how many people shook hands? Now every time you shake hands, like there's only two people shaking hands at a time. So you're always choosing two, right? That's it. Every time you shake hands, it's two people shaking hands. It doesn't matter if I go, it's not a permutation because if Billy and Joe shake hands, well, it doesn't matter. Joe and Billy, they still shook hands. It's thing. Order doesn't matter. Well, altogether, we have, that's equal to 300, okay? So we could guess and check this. That's going to take a long time. I'm going to use the factorials to figure this out. So I'm going to end up getting n factorial all over n minus 2 factorial 2 factorial using the formula is equal to 300. 
Okay? So, let's continue this now. Which we end up getting? I'm going to get n bracket n minus 1 bracket n minus 2 factorial. So we have to break down. That's the top. The bottom is just n minus 2 factorial. And we have 2 factorial, which is actually just equal to 2. So I'm this 2 times minus 2. So I'm just going to leave that as 2. Okay, so now this and this cancel off. We're left with 300. And so we continue this now. I'm going to get n multiplied by n minus 1 is equal to. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. It's equal to 600. Okay? Continue that. I'm going to get n squared plus n is equal to 600. Okay? Now we have to solve for this. Problem is we have n squared here, and we have n there, so how do we solve that? Well, it's quadratic, so we're going to put the 600 in there. So we're going to go n squared plus n. Oh, that's minus n. Mistake. Minus n should be minus n, because remember we have to multiply that into there, that into there. And minus 600 is equal to 0. Okay? So in order to solve this, the easiest way to do that is punch this into your calculator. Put y is equal to x squared minus x minus 600, and then find that x-intercepts. Now, can our answer be negative? No, you can't have a negative factorial, because then it goes on forever. It has to be positive, and that will give you your answer. All right, good luck with your assignment. And I'll see you tomorrow as we work on the assignment together.